Hey friends, ready to read chapter 42. We're almost there, two more chapters. Jack quickly looked up to see May's reaction, but she wasn't looking at him. In fact, she was staring at the ice coffin, her mouth hanging open slightly. May, he said softly, but she didn't move. May, Jack said again, a bit louder this time. We need to get out of here. You will do no such thing, Eudora said, taking a step toward May. This is my granddaughter. I care little what you told her, what stories you filled her head with. Eudora held out a hand toward the princess. May, dear, come here. May finally moved, turning to look at her grandmother, though she still said nothing. Child, said the blonde woman, the proper queen of the West. Come away from here, from her. I have no wish to see you harmed, and I doubt she will surrender peacefully. Eudora smiled gently. Oh, there will be no more surrendering, Rapunzel, she said. Her eyes flashed crimson for a brief moment, and suddenly a wall of red fire filled the doorway behind the blonde woman, blocking off all entry and exit. It still galls me that you, the least of your pathetic little band of rebels, would be the one to capture me, she continued. But now you face me on your own, without your precious huntsmen or those little dwarf allies of his. Do you really think you can challenge me? Philip quietly stepped over to Jack and May. Princess, he whispered, blame me. I should have realized. Jack shook his head. No, it was me who. May whirled around to face her grandmother. Tell me. Eudora's eyes narrowed as the, they turned towards May. Tell you what, dear, she said, her voice calm. Tell me what you did here, May said, just as calmly. Tell me wh why they call you the wicked queen. Eudora sighed. May, no words could do her deeds just. No words could do her deeds justice, girl, Rapunzel said. Her gaze locked on Eudora. Slowly, she drew a sword from her back where it had been held in place by a scabbard shaped out of her own hair. The evil performed in her name would make you shudder. But if you want proof, she pointed her sword at the ice coffin in the middle of the room. There lies the wicked que queen's stepdaughter, Rapunzel said, her voice now shaking. The same stepdaughter the queen ordered the huntsman to kill, child. You see, the magic mirror foretold that Snow White would someday help bring down her reign, so the wicked queen ordered her murdered. The huntsman couldn't do it, though, thankfully, so the queen had no choice but to trick Snow White poison her. That poison still runs through her veins, and there she lies, but a hair from death's embrace. May never took her eyes off Eudora during Rapunzel's speech. Is, is that true, Grandma? She said softly. Eudora reached out and took May's hand in her own. May, she said, all I ask is that you remember the love I've shown you. Did I not raise you to be the young woman you are today? You must listen to your heart, my little May. You belong with me. We, we live happily for so long, the two of us against the world. Her voice raised, then quickly softened to the point where Jack could barely hear her. Don't let them take you from me, May. Don't let it happen. May took a step closer to her grandmother, her eyes wide, though with anger or something else. Jack didn't know. Is it true, she asked again. There was a pause, and the wicked queen nodded. Yes, May, she said, and much more. Besides, every story has a, a basis in truth, but you don't understand why. It's enough that it's true, May said, then took another step toward her grandmother. Back away, child, Rapunzel said, bringing her sword to bear on Eudora. May, please, Philip said. Desperately, the prince turned to the wolf king. We need to get the princess out of here, he pleaded with the animal. Get her back to the dragon. We can escape. The wolf just smiled. I'm not sure whose side you think I'm on here, boy, he said. And with that, the wolf stepped over to stand by Eudora. What? Betrayer! Philip screamed in astonishment. That one betrayed us long ago, Rapunzel said, her eyes on the wicked queen. Despite swearing allegiance to Snow White, he switched sides when we broke into the queen's castle for the mirror. If the charmed one hadn't joined us, we'd all have died. Since then, I'd ha I'd ha I've had men tracking the wolf, but he's always managed to elude them. He was in the Black Forest, Jack said quietly. Rapunzel paused and nodded. Clever wolf, you hid in the one place we couldn't follow. The wolf king bowed mockingly, then turned to Jack. I would have I would have you know, children, that I never betrayed you. I did exactly as I swore I would. I helped your little princess free her grandmother. No more, no less. He then shifted his gaze to Philip. As for the dragon pr princeling, I released Malevolent from her reins. He grinned widely. She did betray my queen Eudora after serving her loyally for many years, but how could I kill so engaging a foe after her, at her weakest? Instead, I shall hunt her down wherever she hides, paying her back for her disloyalty. Nodding toward the room where the half-visible red hood still lay, he said, I see someone already caught my last prey. 
Another one I owe you, monster, Rapunzel said, her eyes burning with rage and tears. Not only did the wolf betray Snow White, he terrorized her sister Rose, she said, pointing back toward where the red hood lay. Rose Red gave up everything to hide the mirror from the wolf, day after day, year after year. Her sword raised. Rapunzel stepped toward Eudora and the wolf king. I will not let her sacrifice be in vain. You always were a melodramatic little girl, Eudora said with a faint smile. I sometimes think Snow kept you around for entertainment. Still, you grow tiresome, and it's far past time that I taught you your proper place. With that, the Wicked Queen reached down, and suddenly Jack realized she was holding his grandfather's bag. She must have picked it up when he thrown it at the Red Hood. And then his blood went cold. The bag still held the mirror. Eudora reached in and withdrew the mirror, the mirror glanced at herself in the glass. And thankfully, she said, fixing a stray hair, I have my most powerful weapon back in my hands. Oh, don't worry, it's working quite well now, thanks to these children. You have no hope of defeating me, Rapunzel, Eudora said, her voice as monotone as the genies. You will lose. Rapunzel smiled softly. Isn't that what you said the last time? With that, she lunged for the queen, thrusting her sword straight at Eudora. The queen didn't even bother moving. Instead, the wolf king leapt forward, blocking Rapunzel's blow with a sword of his own, a sword glowing with swirling white fog. Jack's feet went cold as he quickly choked the scabbard on his checked the scabbard on his back, only to confirm it was empty. The wolf must have taken it while Jack was distracted. Jack wasn't the only one who noticed the sword. That sword, Rapunzel said, her eyes wide as she fell back away from the wolf. Where did you? Eudora smiled again. It wouldn't be the first time Snow's late husband served me. Let this make up for his subsequent betrayal. She took the sword from the wolf and gently waved it through the air, almost competitively, before pointing it at Jack. Still, she said, he gave his sword to another. With that, she tossed the sword handle first to Jack, who caught it without thinking. The Wicked Queen winked at him. I'm sure you'll live up to his wasted potential, she said. Tell him I said hello next time you see him. Jack held the sword out away from him, wanting desperately to throw it across the room in disgust, knowing he should. But instead, he slid it back into the scabbard. Eudora nodded. I thought as much, she said. Now I believe it is far past time we made our exit. She whispered a few words and a circle of red flame seared through the back wall of the palace, cutting a tunnel like the one the huntsman had used to kidnap May and her grandmother in the first place. Eudora now turned to May, her face a mask of confidence, her eyes pleading with her granddaughter. May, she said, putting a thousand questions into that one word. Grandma, May replied, then stepped forward between the Wolf King and the Wicked Queen. Tell me one thing, she said, strangely calm, much too calm for all that was happening. Are you really my grandmother? Eudora smiled sadly. I can't believe you would even ask such a question. You must never doubt my love for you, May. With you, I have everything I could ever want. May took a step toward her. Grandma, she said, her voice breaking. Oh, May, Eudora said, then held her arms out to hug her granddaughter. May hesitated, then stepped forward. The Wolf King was the first to see it. The knife, the Wolf King shouted, lunging forward. And then Jack saw it, too. Saw May pull the witch's knife from her back pocket. Too fast for the wolf to catch her, May plunged the knife into the mirror, straight through the glass and out the other side. May took a step back, her voice completely expressionless. I guess you don't have everything you thought you did. And that is the end of that chapter. May surprised me. How about you? We'll have to see what happens next.